Well, it's time for NASCAR to hit one of the most different tracks in NASCAR. Of course, I'm talking about the Tricky Triangle Pocono Raceway. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR. NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. Pocono Raceway, over the last couple of years, ever since the next gen car came about, I think we've seen a great improvement in the racing at Pocono Raceway. It seems like this newer car is really good on the bigger sort of tracks like a Pocono, like a Michigan, like Auto Club, and hopefully Indianapolis when, when we go to Indianapolis next week. But even though there has been that uptick in racing at Pocono, Pocono in general, I'd say it's still a very strategic race. It's about fuel mileage and having the right timing on your pit stops. And even at this racetrack of Pocono, I think we've talked about it here on the channel, but if we haven't talked about it, you have seen it during the races at the road courses. Before the stage ends, they'll make a pit stop on the road courses to get that track position at the beginning of the next stage. Well, they're able to do that at the road courses because they won't go a lap down. Well, it's the same deal with Pocono because Pocono is such a big racetrack plus they're very slow corners. Like you have to go pretty slow through the tunnel through the tunnel turn. It's taking over 50 seconds for these drivers to get around the racetrack. So if you're in like the top 10, maybe even the top 15, depending on how close you are to the leader, you can come down pit lane and make a quick four tire pit stop, get off, stay on the lead lap and essentially jump the field at the beginning of the next stage. Like I mentioned, there will be some fuel strategy potentially in this race. If we go green in that last stage, it could get quite interesting. This has always been a fuel mileage race, even after they introduced the stage cautions. Back in the day before the stage cautions, it was pretty much pu purely a strategic fuel mileage race. At this point, we can sometimes get fuel mileage, sometimes not, really depending on how the cautions fall in that very last stage. But it's something to really keep an eye out for. So I would maybe even look at, if you're a betting person, I'm putting a little money on a couple of drivers you wouldn't expect to compete for the win, but are willing to take that chance to get to victory lane. One thing we're also going to be seeing throughout the race is there's going to be some cars that are really fast on the short runs and some cars that are really fast on the longer runs. Pocono is one of those racetracks where you're going to see a big difference and variance in the way the cars are set up, and the way they drive throughout the run. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get through some of these favorites I have for the Cup Series event at Pocono. I think it goes without saying, if you've paid attention to Pocono the last, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years maybe at this point, Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota are just so strong here. So I would Watch out for every Joe Gibbs racing car and 2311 car. I don't know about the legacy cars, but I would keep an eye out on those six cars. I think any six of them can go to victory lane. I would also keep an eye out for Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman. Both of these drivers are very good at Pocono. I wouldn't 100% count out Elliott or Byron, but my main focus would be on those two. I think those two are very very talented at this racetrack of Pocono because po like, Pocono is a driver's track. Ultimately, you have three very different corners, so the car is never going to be perfectly set up for all three corners, so the driver has to put in a lot of work. Now that I've gone through some of the favorites, going to make my pick for the event, and I think the driver that's going to win on Sunday is actually starting on the pole, got his second career pole. And that is Ty Gibbs. I think Ty Gibbs will finally get that first career victory. He's been pretty close throughout the year. The last month, I'd say he's been probably the worst Gibbs car over the last month. He's honestly been struggling a little bit here and there, not looking as strong as he did at the beginning of the season. Because at the beginning of the season, he was a top five, top 10 car every week. 
the last couple of weeks. He's been a top 15 guy at best. Like I said, though, Toyota has been phenomenal at Pocono over the years, ever since Toyota got to the Cup Series. And even before Toyota got to the Cup Series, Joe Gibbs Racing has always been very strong at Pocono over over the years. I do also expect, just to add on a little honorary mention, I do expect Hamlin and Larson to compete for the win as well. And I expect to be some good battles between them throughout the day as well. And my underdog pick, ah, this, this one was a tough one. I was debating between two drivers, but ultimately if I had to pick one to be my underdog pick, it would be Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell being a great road course racer. This track is right up his alley. And it seems like Ford is usually pretty strong at Pocono over the years. Also, Michael McDowell is a very smart race car driver. There's going to have to be strategy potentially involved if you want to if he wants to win this race. At the same time, I think he'll have a top 10 car throughout the day. The other driver I was thinking as my underdog was Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez is pretty good at this racetrack. I expect him and Chastain, his teammate, to have a pretty good day as well. But give me all your thoughts down below. What do you think about Pocono Raceway and who is your pick to win the Cup Series event at Pocono this weekend? Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.